Hello again, this is Oliver and welcome back to yet another video, short video where I explain different analysis techniques for Sudoku. If you like my videos, be sure and give me the thumbs up and you might think of subscribing as well, be greatly appreciated. In this analysis technique, we're looking at either rows or columns where there are four or fewer occurrences of the possible. And to make it a little bit clearer because it can get very confusing when we're showing all the different possibles there. I've got rid of all the extraneous ones and we're only looking at the possible, the number two. So moving over now to the columns, this one has got four in um, C, F, H and J. Go on to the next one. It lines up on C. It's got an extra one in E. F, uh, F doesn't line up three we have one uh we just have two here we've got one okay so going on column one doesn't make sense we try column two it has c e g and j column three lines up on e and j two four lines up on j five six seven lines up on e and j uh, that gives us four of them go on those we're going to go in columns two three four and seven so our bases are columns and we're going to be deleting then on c's there'll be nothing on this there'll be this one on the c we'll be deleting on c we'll be deleting on e There'll be nothing there to delete. We'll be deleting on G. So if this works, we'll be deleting over here. And J, if it works, we'll be deleting over here. Okay, so let's have a look at it. So starting off, we might as well start off on column two and we'll pick any one of those four and make it true. So the theory is you start off with four. So in the first column you have a choice or in any one column that you pick, you have a choice of four, you pick one. So that means for the next three columns, there are only three possible options, you pick one. Then the next two columns, there's two options, you pick one. The next column, there's only one option, you pick one. So at the end of the day, in each one of the rows, you will have picked a possible in each one of them, which means that you can then get rid of any other possibles in those rows. Now, if you'd like to go back to um, it was rows, columns, triple. Have a look at that. That gives a good uh, description of how this works. So we'll do it now as an example. We can start at any point at all. I'm going to start up here. So just suppose I start here and I put a two in there. Now in the next one, as it turns out, there's only three places I can do it. Just suppose I put it there. On the next one, there are only two, as it turns out. And suppose I put it here. And then in the last one, it goes in here. So looking at it now, there's a two in each one of the rows. Let's go back on that now. We'll try it a different way. Right, well, that's the last time we started up here. This time, let's start down here somewhere. We'll just we'll start here, just any place at all. And we put a two in there. When we come to the next one, we can put a two in here. Next one, we've those two taken, so we put a two in here. And the last one, that's taken, that's taken, that's taken, and we put a two in there. All right. Now, I'm not saying that any of these is the correct solution, but what I am saying is we end up, when we eventually do get the correct solution, there will be a two in each one of the rows, C, E, G, and J, which means we can get rid of any other twos in those rows. So in this case, we'll be getting rid of the two here. We'll be getting rid of the two over here. And we will get rid of that two there. Okay, that was my long-winded way of explaining it. I hope it wasn't too confusing. And that is the end now of the rows and columns, quads. And if you come back tomorrow, I'll have another short video for you. Till then, Oh, don't forget to subscribe if you can and slant hammer.